Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, happy Sunday to you. Well, hopefully, you are enjoying your weekends. And what we're going to do today is Sunday is a bit of an interesting day for me on the channel because there's usually like a theme going on. Usually, we do an on and off album. Um, this today was supposed to be preparation for Dream Concert, which was happening next weekend. Um, unfortunately, that's been postponed. So instead, we're going to do a whole bunch of catch up stuff from music that I missed. Uh, while I was away on my research trip and a couple of songs from before them that I didn't have enough time to get around to so Welcome to a Sunday full of k-pop catch-ups six episodes for your head tops today starting off with the boy group edition We have got three MVs to check out. We've got the latest comeback from DKB Which I believe dropped before I went on my research trip, but I didn't have time to get around to um, the boys had their Japanese comeback, which we usually don't cover JP um, comebacks from K-pop groups with like all, all, all that much focus on. But the boys are a group that I plan on getting further into this year, so we're going to get a little bit of a head start on them with gibberish. And then finishing off with a little unit debut from two gentlemen over at the B2B camp where Sun Gwang and Min Hyuk have gone unit debut with 90 tan or i don't actually know what the hungul uh title for their group is but 90 tan has a debut titled tang 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 so we're gonna do all three of those in one sitting so let's get through it here we go I can't remember when the last time we had a DKB release was, um, but we've had a few DKB releases we checked out on the channel. None of them really stuck out to me as being like way out of the box and like really confusing, apart from that one double title. The one where it was essentially the same song but they mixed it two different ways and they had two different top lines and I remember doing an additional video on that trying to compare what what was different about each song that was a really interesting time but dkb really haven't had like a big miss for me yet even though i don't really know anything about them so let's see what flirting x uh has in store for us this dropped when did this drop this oh my goodness that went so far uh the 17th so yeah this dropped three days before i went on my research trip but must have been yeah that must have been when i had to uh get stuff ready for class and stuff because wednesdays are kind of weird days for me so let's see what dkb have brought to the table today that's very loud okay i like the light start I also like the band setup. Y'all know how much I love a good K band. Kick it into gear one time. Ooh. Ooh, nice release. Hold on a second. It's got a terrific amount of movement to it. It's got a really good hef heftiness to it. Nice heaviness, nice crunchiness to it that's not overdoing it. Like it still feels like a pop song. But it's got a really nice subtle rock element to it that's playing to my strengths a lot. Okay, see a little bit. It's getting hot in here. This super soft reset at the end of the pre chorus is so smart because then that release comes in. It's like. That sound goes off. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Thank you 
for giving us this post chorus both times. Oh, nice pause. Yo, guitar popped off on that. Wait. Oh, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Go back to the other song. Wow, they really do not give you a lot of time at the end, do they? But, wow. Um, admittedly, I'm not very familiar with DKB's discography, but in terms of title tracks that I've listened to on the channel, this might be my favorite. This is really good. It rips. Oh. Oh, it's very tasty indeed. And... Really, it all comes down to this being such a well-balanced song, because it's... It doesn't do too much, but it's not a simple song either. It's loud, but it's not overwhelming. It's got a nice little bit of grit to it. It's also got a nice little poppiness to it. It's got a nice amount of digital work to it. I think the range that they're singing in is really nice, and the way they kick that chorus into gear is super satisfying to listen to, and... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me hear that pre-chorus again, though. It's so gentle in comparison to what's coming next. It's like, you got a chugging from the bass and the guitar. Nice separated vocal. And then this, like, bow-coded little post-course thing with the pause. Man, this has so much stuff that I like about it. Oh, and then, you know, the fact that... Let's see, it's about here, shouldn't it? The second time around in Chorus 2, you get the same thing. Reset it, and then... That also acts as the bridge. It's kind of a two-in-one post-course the second time around, because it, when you're listening to it, it still feels like it's the post-course after the chorus. That's why it's called a post-course. But then, once you finish that post-course, and you get that guitar kind of just squealing up high like that, then it kicks in that it's also being treated as an instrumental break or a bridge, like the guitar solo within the bridge. And your brain just automatically resets back to, okay, next up, we're already at the final chorus. And then you got this big gang vocal final chorus coming in. It's very well written. It's for as short of a song. I mean, this isn't really that short in this day and age, but this isn't a long song by any means. But that second post chorus does double duty. And because of it, the song doesn't feel like it's missing anything for me. Because this is now the final chorus. Keep the guitar. It's like an entirely different final chorus. You could also call it the outro at following the post chorus as well. But for me, that final chorus is way too elaborate to be just a plain outro. It has to be the final chorus for me. And because of that, that second post chorus becomes very different. And it's, oh, oh, it's very well done. It's really well put together. Right, and now we move on to the JP side of the discography from the boys and the reason why i've thrown this in here um one reason is because we don't actually have a lot of boy group stuff that dropped um there there's a couple in the debutantes that we'll be getting to later today but the boys are a group that kind of like what we're doing is on and off right now i want to do a proper deep dive into the boys at some point um when lip gloss and that whole fantasy part one album dropped last year I was obsessed and I'm finding like you know more and more of their variety stuff and it, they're just a good time 
and I feel like I want to know more about their music as well, not just the variety sense and the recent stuff. Like, when Nectar dropped, I don't think we ever checked it out on the channel. Maybe we did. We didn't do the rest of the album, though. And Nectar was a brilliant song. In fact, I mean, there's a reason why the boys have stuck around on the intro reel now. But their Japanese discography has also been pretty good, all things considered. Though from the ones that I know, I've liked all their Japanese stuff. So I'm hoping that trend continues with Gibberish 2D. And let's see if we have... We don't have captions. That's okay. Here we go. Typically, if we would have done this on its own, I would have approached it in both Japanese and English. We're not going to do that today to save time. I have a separate video for that that I have to do later. I hear that crunch, hold on. I don't know where this is gonna go yet. Hold on. Wow, okay, this is not what I expected from this chorus. I thought we were gonna go something a little bit Anthony. Where are we now? Hold on. Yeah, that is that has taken me to places that I think. What is happening in this song? We're going all over the place. Oh my! It's like every single phrase within a song is treated differently instrumentally. It's also a very rap heavy top line, isn't it? This is complex. Like, really complex. God, that rubbery 808 in the background really kind of brings us all together, doesn't it? Keep it cooking. Long hold. There's the release. Oh my goodness. Who is doing that slide up in the background there? My God. Okay, you know what? They definitely brought the intensity with them this time around. And... This song is definitely at a very high pay grade, I think. Huh. Okay, now that's very interesting, because... I don't know if this is their last Japanese, um comeback that I'm thinking of, but was Delicious the song that came before Gibberish? Because I'm pretty sure that was a pretty kind of standard poppy song too, wasn't it? Because I'm trying to think, for the at least the Korean side of things, at least with their recent discography, for me the boys have always kind of done an every other type dealio. So my first of the boys comeback I think was Roar. Checked out Roar, 
and then lip gloss came the following summer uh then we had watch it in the fall following that year and then we had nectar so we went kind of heavy intense bright and poppy heavier a little slower a little bit crunchier and more poppy and melodic does their japanese discography do the same thing huh that's it that mm. that's got me thinking a little bit now especially if and or when and if we do the whole discography deep dive for the boys which i might regret considering how long their discography is but um yeah that's a really interesting point that i never really thought about this much like a lot of um k-pop fans the japanese discography oftentimes gets kind of swept under a rug for me unless it's like a standout song i don't really pay attention to the uh, jp side of korean artist discographies all that much but this one has me thinking a little bit but the song itself though for me might be th their most complex song purely based on the fact that as you progress through the song you just get thrown so many different styles and arrangements and composition cues that even within you know say the first verse Dad. Like this part, you really don't get a melody, it's almost entirely rhythmic. You get the, like the guitar chug on the fourth beat. Sunu on the top line, rapping, percussion in the background, there's really no melody going on yet. We're adding some more movement in the instrumental section. Throw in a little bit of melody now. And then take away the chugging guitar. And then it just goes major all of a sudden, like... You say blah 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 with the no big no big dash up a yeah yeah all I hear is gibberish gibberish And now we've brought the melody back in on the instrumental side of things where we've gone purely rhythmic on the vocal top line and it's like that balance just continuously fluctuates as you progress through the song and it's, it's busy Because now, instrumental part, almost entirely rhythmic, the melody flips to the vocals, and flip it back again. And then, now that we're in verse 2, the intensity's been ramped up, but all melody is gone. The instrumental section is completely changed up, even though the kind of basic prompt for the second verse is pretty much the same as the first verse the execution is entirely different and it's just kind of a repeat of that throughout the entire song and it's from a composition side of things it's very intricately done it is a little bit busy and a little bit hard to keep up for me but that may be because i'm just not familiar with how complex the boys can get with their music yet I'm very much a very recent fan. Like, the fantasy era is... Oh, essentially, fantasy part one, Christmas in August, is, like, my The Boys' Bread and Butter, just because that's the only album I've listened to from them from start to finish. And... But this is definitely the more intense side of The Boys that I feel like I'll eventually need to connect with down the road. But you know what? For a starting point on their JP discography, I'm not upset by it. Nice. And now this one. Um, I had no idea that this was happening, but I remember every time we come across anything B2B related on the channel, whether it be OSC Saturdays, well, actually, it's probably only OSC Saturdays, or uh, Peniel's solo that we had earlier this year, Ah, I guess we also had Shinshik's solo, and we had Sungjae's. I guess we have had a little bit more B2B stuff this year than I thought, but... Um, we have a unit from B2B, and it's not B2B for you. It's 9010, or, uh... Gu... Gugon? Kugon? Gu... Kugon-tan? 
Sure, we'll go with that. Um, essentially, Un... I almost said Unhyuk, Unguang, and Minhyuk, or I guess Huta, uh, depending on who you are, uh, have created a two-man duo titled 9010, and they made their debut... Um, when did they make their debut? July 31st, right at the end of the month, um, with the song Tang Tang Tang. So, I mean, I have no idea what to expect. I didn't even know this was happening, but it's, you know what, it's brand new B2B music, and I'm so here for it. So, here we go. Okay. Okay. Let's go. Wait, hold on a second. Why does this kind of rip? I love, they're, they're really lean already, leaning into just the sheer contrast between Minhyuk and Umwon. Like, you get this, oh my god, fucking dorks. You know what, hold that thought, this, this rips. But yeah, they're really leaning into like just offsetting just how different of a skill set they bring to the table. Oh, sauce. There's gonna be a third one. Wait, what? <laughs> Oh my god, so we're getting Assassin Attitude, and we're getting Sauce. Hell yes. Almost exactly what you want from these two, really. Slow it down one time. Oh, why are they such dorks? Oh my god. This final course is like the epitome of what this duo is. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, that was so much more than I could have ever expected this to be. Oh! Oh! Now, here's the thing. Like I briefly mentioned right at the end there, this very much is what I expect the combination of Umkwang and Minhyuk to be. Like it's got the bouncy rhythm and the rit like the rhythm and the rhymes from Minhyuk. And it's got the absolute vocal sauce from Umkwang. That final chorus, you essentially get the best of both worlds coming together, and oh my gosh, is it tasty. I also have just noticed credits. Producer, Huta. Lyrics, Huta. Composition, Huta. Aftershock and Dead Bear. Arrangement, Aftershock and Dead Bear. Chorus by Huta. Like, like I've been new that whenever we have a B2B project that one of the members is going to get involved in some way, shape, and form. Usually, Minhyuk or Hyunshik. This... This is a blast. I love this. Um, when can we get more? <laughs> Look, man, I'm selfish, and B2B are a group that I love to come back to whenever we get the chance. Um, but this is freaking spectacular. There are also freaking dorks in this MV, and I love them to bits. Um, give me that final course, and you know, give me that bridge to the final course again. 
This, that slowdown is crazy, especially after you get a pretty high energy song up until that point. That slowdown almost makes it feel like it goes into, uh, what is it? Like it goes into 3 4 in a way just because it's so slow and like the uh, major rhythms completely change there. Get that growl. Little dance break for the homies, hell yeah. This part. Like you're getting the attitude and the delivery from Minhyo, but you're also just getting the constant high note sauce in the background from Moon Kwang, as you'd expect from Mr. Silverlight over there on the side. Just yum, he is high flying with all of the cheese sauce up there. It's like. That is what I'm talking about. Like, yes, this song is short. I wish this was like a three and a half minute song because the energy is terrific. But that is one hell of a way to make a unit debut. That is, that is fire. Okay, that's a lot of fun. I'm glad we went back to check this one out. I mean, we would have checked it out anyways, but man, this is something else. Let me tell you. Um, I'm very excited to see where this goes. I really hope this isn't like a one-and-done type dealio. I also hope we get some kind of group B2B thing um, at some point this year. Considering, well... I'm trying to think, like... Have we had a musical release from everyone apart from Chung Sub this year? No. I'm pretty sure he's had an OST or two. But in terms of a proper like studio release, is Chung Sub the only B2B current B2B member that we haven't had anything from? If that's the case, that's a very solid year for B2B. Considering I feel like we really didn't get a lot of B2B with, you know, all the military stuff that uh that was going on with them over the past couple years or so. But that's brilliant. This entire block was a whole lot of fun. I learned some stuff, I got some new songs to enjoy, and overall, very successful catch-up indeed. But, I am going to wrap it up here, considering we have like 20 more songs that I need to go and check out, so I'm going to do those and leave you all here. So, thank you all for watching along with me, hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today, let us work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world, whether it be checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street, just one small act of kindness to make brighten up someone else's day to day, and know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be, even though I'm just some guy in there who waffles about music in his free time, know that I will always be a friend, an ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.